after meeting former Prime Minister Imran Khan, who has now been unjustly incarcerated for 229 days, Barrister Gohar Ali Khan called on Ambassador Asad Majid to clarify the claims by U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Donald Liu during a congressional hearing on Wednesday. And quote, I think if the no-confidence vote against the Prime Minister succeeds, all will be forgiven in Washington because the Russia visit is being looked at as a decision by the Prime Minister. Otherwise, I think it will be tough going ahead." End quote. In a press conference, PTI's Information Secretary Rauf Hassan read out Donald Liu's threat in meeting with Pakistan's Ambassador Asad Majid contained in the cipher which was reported by The Intercept. The congressional hearing of a subcommittee of the House Foreign Affairs Committee entitled Pakistan After Elections, examining the future of democracy and the U.S.-Pakistan relationship, was held on Wednesday morning in Washington, D.C. In an unprecedented move, Congressman Michael McCall, chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, attended the subcommittee meeting. In his remarks, he said that, in quote, human rights must be respected for democracy to thrive, end quote, adding that, End quote. The failure to recognize basic human rights will unquestionably lead to a downward spiral. End quote. As Assistant Secretary of State Donald Liu, under oath, rejected allegations against him, the entire room erupted in protest and chants of liar, liar. <laughs> Congressman Brad Sherman raised his concern about, quote, selective prosecution, end quote, that had led to Imran Khan being imprisoned. He suggested that the U.S. ambassador visit Imran Khan in jail and ensure that, end quote, he lives to tell the tale, end quote, of his unjust imprisonment. American ambassador needs to visit Imran Khan in prison and make sure that he lives to tell the tale of how he was wrongfully imprisoned uh, through select. Congressman Greg Kassar from Texas questioned Donald Liu about the inconsistency between U.S. policy for other countries where legitimacy of elections has been questionable versus the willingness to engage with the controversial government installed in Pakistan that lacks democratic legitimacy. Most security assistance to Pakistan has been suspended since 2018. Recently, the Pakistani ambassador said that Pakistan's awaiting a decision from the U.S. on increasing military sales and financing. Yes or no, are there ongoing conversations about increasing military assistance to Pakistan? Uh, no uh, ongoing conversation about large-scale increases. While responding to another question by Representative Kassar, Assistant Secretary of State Donna Liu confirmed that the U.S. has identified units of security forces that would not be eligible for security assistance and that there are no ongoing discussions about increasing U.S. security assistance for Pakistan. In response to Congressman August Luger, Donna Liu confirmed the U.S. does not consider the recent elections in Pakistan to be free and fair. After the congressional hearing, the Foreign Affairs Committee unanimously approved House Resolution 901, calling for an investigation of allegations of fraud in the Pakistan election. Now, the resolution will be voted upon in the U.S. Congress. There have been reports about Pakistani Americans being harassed on U.S. soil by the Pakistani regime. During the congressional hearing on Wednesday, Congressman August Luger questioned Donald Liu on reports of transnational repression of Pakistani Americans and how the State Department is addressing those concerns. Is the State Department monitoring reports of transnational repression made by Pakistani Americans? And if so, what, is, what steps are the State Department taking to address these topics? Sir, we are tracking transnational repression around the world, including with respect to allegations made about Pakistan. We are looking very closely at the examples offered. If we find that they are substantiated, we will address them directly with Pakistan government. Justice Jamal Mandukhail in the Supreme Court, while granting post-arrest bail in Ninth May cases, gave very important remarks on Wednesday. He asked the prosecution if it is a crime to participate in a protest rally or being a member of a political party. He further asked how it is possible to declare a former Prime Minister of Pakistan a traitor over the statement of a head constable.
Furthermore, he questioned the charges of terrorism being added and asked if the law enforcement even knew what terrorism was. In his historic remarks, Justice Mandel added, and quote, instead of apprehending real terrorists, the state is after people who protest or do rallies. Have they ever captured the masterminds behind the bombings? If the real terrorists were brought to justice, no one would be martyred, end quote. The UN says a humanitarian travesty is playing out in Sudan amid international inattention and inaction. The northeastern African nation is suffering one of the worst humanitarian crises in recent history after nearly a year of war, the United Nations has warned. Fighting between the army headed by General Abdel Fateh al-Burhan and the paramilitary rapid support forces led by Mohammed Hamdan Degalo since last April has killed tens of thousands of people as the threat of famine looms amid international inaction.